All right, let's get into the word. Go with me to Psalms 133. Amen. We're going to talk about, amen, continuing in love and in unity. How to continue in love and unity. Jesus prayed a prayer in John 17, amen, starting in verse 20. He said that we may become one just as him and the Father are one. Amen. So Jesus' last prayer to the Father was that we become one. Amen. Glory to God. Because, amen, that's, that's when he can do his greater work when we become one. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 12, verse 5, we who are many in the body of Christ are one, one, one body. We are many members, but one body. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. And so you got to understand to the degree that we become one and continue in that, that's the degree that God can bless the church as a whole. That's the degree that he can demonstrate to this world that Jesus is Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So it's imperable and it's necessary that we become one, that we do the work of becoming one. How many of you know becoming one is a work? Amen. So see, for me to, to put up with you and deal with you, it's going to take faith and grace. Amen. Because sometimes you get messy. Right. Amen. But, 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 but I can't quit on you. Amen. Because I get messy too. Amen. Glory to God. So if you don't know how to deal with me in that messy state, you won't know how to deal with me in the reward state. Hmm. Paul said in 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 7, he said, when you, when, you, when you took part in my suffering, you take part in my consolation. So Pastor Fossil, a lot of people want to take part in the consolation, but they don't want to take part in the suffering. Mm. Jesus said in Luke 22, 28, he told his disciples, you are they who, who continue with me in my temptation. Glory to God. Therefore, I'm finna enthrone you. I'm finna put you on the throne. Set you over the tribe, 12 tribes of Israel, governing them. Amen. Why? Because you didn't quit on me in my temptation. Mm. Glory to God. So the Lord spoke to me while I was sitting right there while you were singing that song. Amen. The Lord spoke to me. He said, teach them, teach the body today. Teach the people today how to continue in love and unity. Show them the value of it, the importance of it. Show them that I'm no longer hindered in doing in their life, amen, what I'm there to do. All right. This will take the breaks off of the mir miracles. Where's the miracles at in the church? Amen. Where's the signs and wonders at? Amen. Glory to God. Amen. You know, we were, uh, Minister Greta, First Lady and I, we went uh, yesterday to pray with a sister who was on her deathbed. The doctors had told her that, matter of fact, she's in hospice. Amen. With cancer in the brain. No movement, no response. April was there as well. Amen. And I'm thinking, I'm crying, God, where's the miracles? Why, why, why is it? Here this girl, 53 years old. Right. Yes. Amen. Recently married. Amen. And here she is, her husband, had to spend the night in here. Amen. And listen to them pronounce death on her. Amen. And she's part of a local church. Where is the miracle? And I mean, I got real dissatisfied. And so the Lord began to minister to me. He said, I want to return to the body. I want to return to the church, the signs and wonders, the miracles that belong to it. He said, I want to, I want to replace their brass with gold. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. So this is how it's going to happen. Notice there in Psalms 133. Amen. Somebody say love and unity is important. So before we de determine the importance of something, we have to let God tell us what's important to him. Because whatever is important to God, it should be important to us. Amen. 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 Whatever calls him to be blessed, whatever causes him to rejoice, should be the, the, the cause for our rejoicement and blessing. Amen. So you can only determine an, uh, the importance, the degree of something important as God shows you what's important to him. Because whatever is important to him should be important to us.
Now notice here in Psalms 133, look there in verse 1. The Bible says, Behold how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. God said, y'all want to see something good and pleasant to me? Amen. He said, when I look at brothers dwelling together in unity, he said, that's good and pleasant. He said, what a sight to behold. And then he describes to us how it looks in his eyes. Amen. He said, it's like the precious ornament. This ain't just ornament, but this is the most precious, prestige, prestige ornament. Amen. It's the most valuable aspects of the ornament. An ornament represents anointing and blessing and confirmation. He said it's precious. This oil, this anointing, this ornament is precious. He said it's so precious. Notice what he said. It's like the precious ornament up on the head that ran down the beard, even down Aaron's beard, that went down to the skirts of his garment. Look at that unity there. Look at that oneness there. It started on the head and the beard. Then it went down to the skirts. Anything that's connected, anything that's in unity, this oil is coming up on you. Mm. It's only this unity that breaks up this flow. Mm, but as you stay in unity, this all, it's just like waiting on a bus stop. Hey Amen. That bus is coming. And if you stay there till it comes, you're going to be on that bus. That's how this anointing is. If you stay connected to the head, then it'll get on the beard and it'll get on to the skirts. Somebody say, I'm covered. Say it again. See, because I'm in love and I'm in unity. Amen. Glory to God. Now, notice, he said there, let's continue to read. Let's read, it to, notice verse 3. He said it's like the dew of Hermon, as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion. He said, for there, there, wherever you see love and unity at, where people are one at, where people are working together at, amen. He said, for there, the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. So we don't have to pray, Lord, bless this. We just get in love and unity. And there go the blessing right there. It'll meet us right there. It'll introduce itself to us right The Lord put the blessing on love and unity. And he said, church, if you get there, and it'll meet you. Right. Healing will meet you. Prosperity will meet you. Breakthrough, answer to your prayer, amen, is right there. Amen. So whatever work it takes to get there, amen, it's going to be worth it. Because when you get there, you're going to find the commanded blessing. You're going to walk in the commanded blessing. Amen. Glory be to God. Are you seeing this? So the commanded blessing is on the place of love and unity. Amen. Glory to God. And the only thing that can remove this blessing is disunity. Ah, can you see this? I say, can you see this? I say, can you see this? Now turn with me real quick. Turn with me if you would. Amen. To, to John chapter 17. Amen. Why is love and unity so important to God? Look at John chapter 17. This is Jesus praying his last prayer while he was on earth before he was crucified. He prayed this prayer to the Father. Amen. Now notice what he said there in verse 20. He said, neither I pray for these alone, but for them which shall believe upon me through the word. See, this is how you come into love and unity through the new birth. Amen. I said through the new birth. Amen. This is how you get in love and unity with God is through the new birth. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. And notice, notice here what Jesus said. He said the only way they're going to believe, the world is going to believe, amen, is through the church testifying of them about him. Mm. He said, so I'm praying for them who are going to believe up on me through their witness, through their word. Now notice here in verse 21, the Bible goes on to say, for, for that they may be one, this is his prayer, that they may be one, as thou, Father, are in me, I in thee, that they also may be one in us, for what purpose, Jesus? So that the world may believe that God sent Jesus to save the world. So to the degree that we walk in love and unity, that's the degree that the world going to see the need they have for Jesus. Amen. And you know the reason why people ain't seeing the need that they have for Jesus, especially in our schools, especially on our college campuses, especially in our workplaces, because they're not seeing the church walk together in love and unity. To the degree that we walk in love and unity, that's the degree that the Holy Ghost going to open the minds of this world and show them they can't do without Jesus. Amen. 
So this is how valuable and important walking in love and unity is. It's because God can't serve the world except the church become one. Mm. Are you seeing this today? I said, are you seeing this today? Amen. Now notice what Jesus said here. Notice in verse 22. He says, and the glory which thou gavest me, I give unto them so that they can show it off. And look at my dress. Look at my car. Look at my house. Ah, too bad you ain't like me. No, he gave us this glory. Amen. So he can do what? So we can become one. So my blessing, my breakthrough, the answers to my prayer is not to compete and compare with you. Amen. It's to make us one. Amen. Are y'all seeing this today? I said, oh, we see, 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 to the degree that we become one, that's the degree that Jesus can show this world they need him. Amen. Amen. To the degree that, that we become one, that's the degree that we walk in the commanded blessing. Go out and pray, Lord, save my children. Lord, save my, ah, amen. You're already walking in a commandment. Bless. That commanded blessing is answering for you. Why? Because you've done the work of becoming one. Mm. Are you seeing this today? Now, go here with me if you would. Amen. Praise the Lord. To, to uh, uh, mm, let's see, Mark chapter 16. Because, uh, Pastor Joel, I was, you know, praying over that sister yesterday, just asking the Lord, 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 hey, what is it going to take to change her condition? What is it going to take on the church's part? You know, because I, I couldn't come up with, I couldn't see any, I, I was just stuck. I didn't know what to do. I'm like, Lord, I don't know what to do. I'm here, I don't know what to do. I don't want to just do anything. I want to do what you want me to do. So I need you to speak to me and show me. And this is what the Lord spoke to me, Minister King. He spoke this to me just as clear as day. I know it like I know my name. This is what he said. This is what he said. And it was an indictment on us, the church. It was like an indictment on us. It was like God saying, I'm done all I can do. Now y'all got to do something. And, and this is what he said. Look there with me to the, the, the Mark chapter 16. Look there in verse, verse. Uh, let's pick it up in verse, verse 14. Well, verse, let's pick it up in verse, yeah, verse Mark 16. Let's pick it up in verse 15. Jesus said, go into all the world, preach the gospel. And he said unto, wait a minute, stop right there. Verse 15. And he said unto who? them not him or her but the whole he said unto them go into all the world preach the gospel amen to every creature that's why every week we pass out three soul winning cards you ought to have three soul winning cards that you're passing out to people because we're part of them that have been commissioned to preach the gospel are you seeing this? Until all of us participate, none of us are participating. Amen. He said, these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. Notice, notice, verse 17. These signs shall follow them. Notice, them. See, he keep putting emphasis on the whole. Amen. So we're supposed to provoke one another to love and good work. When I see you not participating in this, it, it, it's saying to me that we're going to be hindered somewhat. So I'm showing you how your choices to be independent is affecting the whole. Ah, if I just knew that, that my choices affected others. Amen. I'll choose and decide more responsibly. Mmm. It's only when I lose sight that my choices don't affect others that I choose irresponsibly. Are y'all hearing me today, church? Amen. So when I make a decision not to be a tither and an offering giver, I'm asking myself, who is this choice affecting? Mm. When I make a choice not to pray or not to go to church or read my word, I ask myself, who is this choice affecting? Mmm. See, when I make a decision to withdraw myself, amen, that choice is impacting the whole. Because he said how beautiful and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. He said, for there the Lord has commanded the blessing. So if I could just get you in a body, get you in a house where we're walking in love and unity, I can get you to answer to your prayer. 
Amen. I can get you under the glory so the Lord can change your story. Woo, glory. He said, I've given them my glory. Amen. So that they can become one. Mm, glory be to God. Now notice what he said. These signs shall follow them that believe. Amen. Glory to God. They shall cast out devils. You know why devils ain't leaving? Because it ain't enough of them and they. You know the reason why the devil stay? Because there's not enough of them and they. Amen. That's a, that's a rap song, Pastor Maurice. Put it together. Amen. That's a Christian rap title right there, that song. Amen. You know the reason why the devil stay? Because there's not enough of them and they. <laughs> Man, this, is, this boy is just gangster, boy. He's just, that Pastor Mike, boy. He's gangster, boy. All right, all right, here we go. Notice what he said there. Matt, uh, Mark 16. Notice, and these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out devil. They shall speak with new tongues. And if they take up or drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. And they, they, them shall lay hands on the sick and the sick shall recover. You know why the sick ain't recovering? Because it's not enough of them and they. You know why there ain't no signs and wonders and miracles? Because it's not enough of them and they. Mm. Glory to God. So if I can just teach you how to continue in love and unity, signs and wonders will not be strange to us. They'll be a common thing to us. Glory to God. Amen. Are you seeing this today? Amen. He said how beautiful and pleasant it is for brethren to, 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 to dwell together in unity. Amen. You see how important it is to God. You see how important it is to Jesus. Let's, let's see how important it was to the early church. Go there, if you would, to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Amen. Glory to God. It was important to God. It's important to Jesus that we become one. Amen. Glory to God. We got to lay aside our indifferences, our individuality. Amen. And we, become, we have to become part of a whole. Amen. We got to lay aside our jealousies, our envyings. Amen. Glory to God. We got to become part of a whole. We got to become one with one another. Glory to God. And I'm going to show you how to do that and how to continue in that today. Now, notice here in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, this is Paul's instruction to the church where becoming one is concerned. Notice there in verse 10, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10. He said, now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all do what? Speak the same thing, that there be no divisions among you. Are you seeing this instruction? That there be no divisions among you, but you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. How many of you know this is a work? Amen. Yes. Amen. But once we do it, we become one. Amen. And these signs and wonders will follow us. They will accommodate us. We'll be known to having solutions to this world's challenges. People will know where to come and get help at. Hallelujah. Glory to God. When the doctor say, or the lawyer say, or the banker say, ain't no more we can do, they say, let's go to that church. Amen. Where the glory is. Amen. So I can get our story changed. Amen. Let's go to that place where signs and wonders and miracles are commonplace. Amen. Glory be to God. Are y'all seeing this today? I said, are you seeing this today? Amen. So we're going to do the work of becoming one. Amen. Glory to God. So Jesus can have, amen, glory to God, access to save this world through our oneness, through our unity. Amen. Now notice what he said. He said, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing, that there be no divisions among you. Are you seeing this today? Amen. Now go with me, if you would, to Philippians. Philippians, here's another church. I can go through all these churches and show you where Paul gave the instruction of becoming one. But I'll just pick two of them out for the sake of time. Notice there in Philippians chapter 1. Philippians chapter 1, verse 27. He says, only let your conversation as becometh the gospel of Christ, that whether I come and see you or else be absent, that I may hear of your affairs, that you stand fast in what? One spirit, one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. 
Are you seeing this today? Striving together for the faith of the gospel. Glory to God. And becoming one is a work. Amen. But the reward of this work is signs and wonders and miracles. God has access to redeem those who have no answers to their challenges through the church. Are you seeing this today? Amen. Glory to God. Now, 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 how do I become one? How do, how do I do the work of becoming one? What's involved in becoming one? What's involved in becoming one? Amen. Number one, the first thing we have to do, amen, glory to God, is we have to forgive one another for offenses that we've done toward one another. Mm. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? I said, are you, are you, how many of you know forgiveness is a gift? A gift is something you don't earn. It's something I give. Mm. Glory to God. Are y'all seeing this? Look there in Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Amen. How are we to forgive? Look there with me in Ephesians chapter, what is it? Yeah, for Ephesians chapter 4. Let's pick it up in verse 32. Y'all following with me? I said, are you following with me? Ephesians 4 verse 32. And be kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another. How? Even as God for Christ's sake have forgiven you. So don't you determine how you should forgive them. You let how God forgave you in Christ be the standard that you use when you forgive them. Mm. Ask yourself, amen, did God forgive me? Yeah, so I owe that to them. Are you seeing that? So this is how we become one. We forgive one another. Amen. Number two, we solve our indifferences. We solve our indifferences. Ephesians 4, amen, Ephesians 5, amen, uh, where, where is it at? Uh, where it talks about let not the sun go down. Ephesians 4, where is it? It says don't let the sun go down on your anger. Verse 26, be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down on your anger. So we solve our in indifferences before the sun go down. That don't mean you, you got all day to be mad and then the sun, about 10 minutes before it go down, you say, okay, I forget. That ain't what that's talking about. That's talking about don't leave one another's presence without this issue being solved. Hallelujah. The Bible says, amen, in Matthew chapter 5, Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. He said, if, if you, when you get ready to do your giving, if you remember that you have ought against your brother or he has it against you, he said, put your gift down. Then go settle that ought. Then come and offer your gift. The reason why God is not answering for many of you who give tithes and offerings because you're giving them out of ought with your brothers and sisters. Right. Mm, he can't violate this principle just to bless you. Right. You can't tithe out of the law. You got to do it out of the spirit. Amen. Amen. So he said, why you offer your gift? If you remember or out against someone, go solve it. They may not be in the congregation, but just write it down. I'm going to do it. I do it right now. Release it right now. Put the time and the date on there and say, Lord, it's recorded. What I did in secret, you will reward me openly. Now I'm going to go offer my gift. Hey man, don't make an excuse not to make an excuse too. Amen. Mm. Glory to God. Are y'all seeing this today? So we're talking about how to become one. Number one, amen, we forgive one another. Number two, we solve our indifferences. We solve our, Jesus was so adamant about this. Amen, he, he, he put it in the Sermon of the Mount. He said, he said if, 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 if Peter said, how often should I forgive my brothers? To seven times, he put a limit on it, Pastor Friday. He said, I'm just going to go to seven times. That's enough, dude. I'm going to pull his sword out. <laughs> he said, now I'm going to go get permission to, from Jesus. <laughs> and Jesus said, boy, is you crazy? You're not only going to forgive them seven times, but seven times 70. What? I shouldn't even ask you. <laughs> Jesus said, when it comes to forgiveness, don't put no limit on it. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Are you seeing it? He said, this is what's going to keep you becoming one. And he said, listen, and if you have an all against your brother, he said, you take it to him. You go to him personally. And you deal with him. Don't talk about the whole church get them involved. You go to him personally. Amen. Amen. We go to everybody else, man. You say, well, so, right. 
And you don't realize you are becoming a proponent to disrupt love and unity to remove the sign and wonder, amen, the miracle status off the church. Amen. 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 I told you if we would just realize how our choices affect others, we'll be more responsible. Amen. Amen. I'm doing the work of becoming one because I know just living in life itself is going to bring me to a place where can't nobody help me but God. And I don't want to be a victim to this world's situation. I don't want to be a victim to satanic harassment and affliction. I want all of my tests to turn into testimonies, but I need your support. I need you together with me. I need my, they, what's that song? I need you, you need me. We all are part. And then we sang that song and go out of church and fuss with our brothers and sisters. We change the two. I don't need you. You don't need me. <laughs> Somebody said, quit changing the song. <laughs> hey Amen. Every time I see you doing something, I would say, quit changing the song. <laughs> hey Amen. Hey Amen. And then number three, we, we, we got we, we to gotta quit competing and comparing with one another. I said we got to com quit competing and comparing with one another. Turn there with me if you would to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians, where is that? Chapter 12? 2 Corinthians chapter 12? Or is it 1 Corinthians 10? 2 Corinthians 10. Amen. Glory to God. Verse, verse, uh, verse, verse 12. Yeah. For 2 Corinthians 10 verse 12. We have to quit competing and comparing with one another. Amen. Well, you know, so and so started her business, and man, she got new car, new shoes, new house. I, and then you, you go harass your husband. <laughs> See, we gotta quit competing and comparing. We gotta learn how to rejoice when one of us get promoted or one of us get blessed. Amen. We gotta learn how to rejoice. The Bible says, "Rejoice with them that rejoice." Instead of saying, oh, no, I didn't know respect the person. I'm next. I'm next. I'm a mind coming. See, that's messed up. Somebody say that's messed up. Amen. No, go ahead and rejoice with them. Look that with me to 2 Corinthians. Are you glad the Lord changed this message? See, you want to get the glory, the signs and wonders and miracles back on the church so we can become truly the light of this world, the salt of the earth, the answer to their challenges. Hallelujah. He don't want this world looking outside of the church for nothing. Amen. He wants the church to answer everything. Glory to God. So to the degree that we become one, that's the degree of solutions we can provide to this world. That's the degree that we can present Jesus to this world. Amen. Now notice here in 2 Corinthians chapter, chapter 10, look at verse 12. Paul admonishes the church. He said, for we dare not make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves, but they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves. He said, they ain't wise. So you need to tell the sister called her, hey, you know, sister, sister, you said, girl, that ain't why, that ain't why, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it right there. Hey, Amen, you're removing some solutions from God to our challenges. Hallelujah, you're disrupting love and unity. Hey, Amen, are y'all seeing this today? So we're doing the work of becoming one. 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 Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Somebody say love and unity. Love Come on, say it again. Love Come on, say it one more time. Love and unity. Love and unity. Amen. Number one, I forgive you. Number two, amen, glory to God. What else? What was number two? What? So I solve our indifferences. And then number three, I do what? I don't compete and compare. Amen. Glory to God. See, love and unity is not me being like you or you being like me. That's, that's disunity. Because you're going to see some things in me that you don't want to be. And I'm going to see some things in you that you don't want to be. But love and unity is when both of us make a decisive decision to be like Jesus. When you make a decision to be like Jesus, Brother Terry, and I make a decision to be like Jesus, that get rid of all disagreement. 
We don't have no more disagreement. Why? Because we ain't trying to be like each other. We, we're aiming to be like Jesus. Mm. Are you seeing this today? I said, are you seeing this today? Amen. And then number, number four. Y'all ready? Are y'all getting this? Are y'all going to put the work in or what? Are we going to put the work? Somebody say, I'm going to put the work in. And I'm going to start right now. Amen. Glory to God. I never need to be solution dry. Like yesterday, it was a, I ain't never felt that bad. I mean, I ain't never been without what to do like that. Here this crisis is laying in front of me. Amen. And I'm like, God, God, he done gave her just a few hours to live. Yeah, what do you? And the Lord showed me this. He said, until you get this going, mm, won't be no answer. These signs will follow them that believe. Mm. Are you seeing this today? And then number four, amen, we got to, amen, start giving to each other. Sharing with each other. I said sharing with each other. Amen. The Bible said him that know to do good and don't do it is sin. Amen. The Bible says, amen, in 1 John chapter 3, verse 16, it says, amen, when you see your brother in need and you shut up your bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in you? You praying, Lord, go be warm, brother, be warm, be filled. It's going to be all right. And you got blankets. Right. Glory to God. Are y'all saying this today? Amen. Glory to God. Go with me to Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4. Amen. Acts chapter 4. Glory be to God. Y'all getting anything still? Amen. Number 4. Amen. We got to learn how to share and give to each other. Share and give to each other. Share and give to each other. I said share and give to each other. Glory to God. Share and give. You don't see any of that going on in the body of Christ as a whole. Amen. Glory to God. We get our increase and we, we thank Walmart. I'm finna share and give with Walmart. I'm finna share and give with Macy. I'm finna share and give on this internet online shopping. I'm finna share and give. But here your brother is. Getting you to agree with him in prayer concerning some things he's dealing with that's beyond his ability to perform on. And you got extra. Mm. Come on, see, you got to teach this. We have to teach what we expect. We can't assume you know this. We have to teach this. And to the degree that we operate in it, watch the commanded blessing operate in you. Watch it, I saw it. I'm telling you, it was a time, amen, that we were walking in this thing, Sister Tanya. I'm telling you, we didn't even have to pray for money. We didn't have to pray for souls. We didn't have to pray for nothing. But we were walking in the commanded blessing. It's only when disunity hit this house that struggle hit. Right. Right. Amen. amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And I don't know about you, but I'm one of them pastors. I always train you to Jesus because he, he's the one that promised never to leave you or forsake you. Amen. So if I train you to him, and if I leave or go somewhere, or he assign me so guess what? He's still there. All right. All right. So your miracle status don't leave. All right. Glory to God. So I'm training you to him, not me. Amen. 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 Glory to God. You're only following me as I follow him. I'm pointing you to him, just like Jesus pointed to his disciples. He said, look, it's coming a time when I ain't going to be here with y'all. He said, but listen, your faith can be here. Your faith can still deliver on the promises of God. So I'm training you to your faith. And he got in the boat with him and said, let's go to the other side. And so he went back in and laid on the pillow because he's already gave the word. And then here they are, Jesus! A little storm, a little water, a little wave. Jesus! Don't you care about it? What you mean that I care about you? Hey, Amen. I saved you, delivered you, and set you free. Your life been different ever since you what you mean see when things get to happen to you and if you don't know how to walk in faith you'll get to complaining right. Right. how can God care about me and let this happen right. amen no amen develop your faith build your faith your faith is the answer the solution to any satanic oppression he said taking a shield of faith whereby you're able to quench all the fiery darts of the devil Amen. So that's what I'm training you to, to your faith, to get in love and unity so this blessing can answer for you in your house. If you'll demonstrate love and unity in this house, God will demonstrate it in your house. Glory to God. Glory to God. Are y'all 
y'all hearing what I'm saying? Mr. Kago on my preaching mic. Amen. That's Mr. Kago. Where your hand, Mr. Kago? That's my friend right there. Pastor, you see that brother raising his hand? Raise your hand, Mr. Kago. Give him a good CD. One of them, the best one. You know, the one that you, that got you. Get that to him. Yeah, I'll take care of it. That's my man right there. Amen. Glory to God. Mr. Kago right there. Amen. All right. Now, now, what did we say? Number what? Acts 4. Okay, we said, what was the point, though? Number four was what? Come on, y'all got to get through. I got five minutes. That's it. Sharing and giving. Turn to somebody and say, I'm ready to share with you. I'm ready to give to you. I remember, I remember we had First Lady's birthday celebration a couple weeks ago. Sister Peaches put that together. It was so awesome. Give yourself a hand for participating. She said that that was the best birthday she ever had. Amen. And so, you know, she had a contest where, you know, certain things on the list that you had to go ask people. So, you, you know, it's the spark fellowship with people and that you didn't know. And she said one of the questions was, find somebody who, who will give you five dollars if you ask for it. Man, everybody in the gym found me. And Pastor Fowles it, it was an answer up under there. It was another question that said, find somebody ha that had read the whole Bible. <laughs> so what they would do is say, Pastor, look, I want you to answer these two right here. I know you done read the whole Bible, but this one about the five dollars. <laughs> and, and so I had about two or three five dollars. And so I looked at it, Pastor uh, Joy.